Sound variations are essential when working in nonlinear media, but can oftentimes be time consuming. So this week, we're going to take a look at maximizing efficiency and productivity by mixing directly in the engine. So I've worked on games before where we've had to create variations of assets uh, for whatever project we're working on, whether it's gunshots or footsteps. Uh, those are probably the most common things that you see variations for. And the reason that we want to create variations is so that our user doesn't get annoyed uh, with a constant repetitive sound. So a couple weeks ago, we took a look at using different household items uh, to create one single punch sound. And I got to thinking about it, and, and we definitely want variations if we're going to put something like that into a game. So I started looking at ways to create variations. Um, and if we're doing something in Pro Tools, you know, we can go through and we can pull different assets and we can mix that and then we can switch some assets around and then mix it again. That just seems to take a really long time. So I wanted to try and find a process uh, where we can take all of the assets that we've created and, and mix them together efficiently to try and get as many variations as we can. So we're going to be working with uh, the assets that we made for that punch sound, all the different uh, sound effects. If you missed that video, definitely go check it out. Uh, there will be a link in the description below for that video. Those sounds are what we're going to be using. As you can see here, I've got all the different sound assets already imported into Unreal Engine. We actually ended up with 95 different assets over four different types. Uh, so we've got a bamboo breaking sound uh, for the bone crunch. Uh, we've got both a bed and a pillow impact for the hit. And then we were playing around with a shampoo bottle, kind of getting some gloppy sounds um, for some of that gore. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to break these up and we can actually mix these all together fairly quickly using a single sound cue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on here and under our sounds we're going to create a sound cue and we're just going to call this punch. And then we can open up this sound cue. So I'm going to start by dragging in um, everything from each type of group. Uh, we're going to start with the bamboo sounds and I'm just going to go ahead and select all the different bamboo sounds and we're going to drag them in here. We're going to zoom out because we're going to take up quite a bit of room. So we can go ahead and select all of our different bamboo sounds and we'll grab a random node and pull this in. And what this is going to do is it's going to take each of our bamboo crack sounds that we made and it's just randomly going to pick one of them. And now we're going to do the same thing for our bed impact sounds. We're going to go ahead and grab all of these. Drag these in as well. Highlight those. And that way when we bring in our, our random node, it's just going to go ahead and auto connect it. Which is going to save us some time from having to go through and manually connect all of them. Then we're going to do the same thing with our pillow impacts. And lastly, we're gonna grab all of our shampoo bottle Foley. Now we will run into a problem here uh, because we actually have 36 assets and the random node will only accept 32 of them. But there's a pretty simple workaround for that. As you can see here, we've got four assets that didn't get applied to our random pool. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually take these four, pull them into a random, and then we're going to take these two randoms and pull them into yet another random. And then we can go ahead and, and organize these. So as you can see, uh, we've got our four different groups. Uh, so it's going to randomly pull uh, from the bamboo and then it's going to randomly pull from the bed and the pillow, and lastly, our shampoo. Uh, if we highlight the random node, we can come up here and click play node. And then it'll randomly select throughout here. 
Something else that we can do to maximize our variations is on each of these, we can also pull in a modulator node. And what a modulator node does is, as you can see over here on the side, it actually allows us to modulate uh, the pitch as well as the volume, which kind of helps randomize uh, some of those assets. So we're gonna go ahead and hook a modulator node up here. And we're just gonna go ahead and copy this and hook all of our different groups up to it. And now we can take our four modulator nodes and we're gonna pull these into a mixer. So now what it's going to do is it's going to pull a random sound from each of these groups. It's going to modulate it a little bit and then it's going to mix them together and then that's what's going to go into our output. And if we wanted to we could even throw a modulator node in here as well. And so now that we have uh, each of our groups being pulled and mixed together, uh, we can go ahead and check out what this cue sounds like. And you can even see it, it lights up uh, as it randomly pulls these in. Now, as we play these, you can hear that the, the bed impact sounds are a little bit louder than the rest of the, the other sounds. So what we can do is we can actually click on our mixer node here. And over on the left hand side, uh, you'll see that all four channels are being played at uh, full volume. And you can see that our bed impact sounds are coming in here on the second channel. Uh, so we can actually just attenuate these. Maybe we'll pull those down to 0.75. And then we can play around with it. We can play the whole cue. And you can hear that that sounds a lot better already. Now, you know, obviously these settings are going to be different based on what you're working on. Uh, so you'd want to come in here and change them. You can also play with the modulator settings and change the pitch and volume that it modulates at. But that's essentially it. Uh, so I know this was kind of a short video, but it's definitely effective when working with sounds and nonlinear media. All right. So as always, thanks for tuning in and hanging out. As I mentioned before, all of these sounds came from the creating a punch sound using only household items that we did. Make sure you check out that video on how we created those sounds. If there's anything you'd like to see in my videos, make sure you drop a comment below, or you can get a hold of me on any one of these social media channels. Until next time.